new Epcot Festival begins today, and you guys know what that means. This is the ultimate foodie guide to Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. <laughs> Hello from the very first day of Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. We have so many new things that we are going to be trying today, as well as so many returning favorites that we are going to be reunited with. This year, the festival is here through May 27th, and I gotta say, I am quite impressed with the menus. So let's just get right into it. Our first stop is going to be at none other than Brunch Cot, where they've got a bunch of returning favorites and something new that I'm very excited to try. We have an avocado toast, biscuit and gravy with an impossible chicken fried steak, okay, fried cinnamon roll bites. One of my favorite things every single year. They also have a Fruit Loops shake and a coffee cocktail. Uh-oh, a little espresso martini. I think we might have to get it. Okay, well, to no surprise, we pretty much did a clean sweep of brunch cut. This is a favorite booth almost every year. They always have some really good foods. Let's start with a snack that I already know and love, the fried cinnamon roll bites. These have cream cheese frosting and candied bacon for five bucks. These are a favorite of the festival for mine. Every single year I gotta get them, especially on opening day. Uh, this is one of my all time favorite festival foods out of, out of any of the festivals here at Epcot. I think it is absolutely one of the best. And this year I'm surprised. Usually they give you like three cinnamon roll bites. This year we have five, which is perfect because I have plenty of people to share them with. I am here with my friend and eat it Katie and her mom Peggy and I am introducing them to one of my favorite festival foods Katie's from Disneyland so I don't think she's ever had these fried cinnamon roll bites and I am very excited for her to try them what do you think I'm very excited to try these I love cinnamon rolls and I love fried things so all right well let's eat them first bite of the fest cheers guys no better way to start mm. oh my god well, no surprise, that was absolutely delicious. Every year, it's a favorite of mine. If you're looking for a sweet treat at the festival, I haven't even tried anything else. That's my first bite of the festival, and I could already recommend you the fried cinnamon roll bites. Now, usually, they're stuffed with more of like a cream cheese kind of frosting on the inside. This year, they're stuffed with like a cinnamon roll filling. So like the inside of a gooey cinnamon roll that you get from like Cinnabon or something. Oh my God, they're so good. It's like a croissant. It's like a flaky dough fried coated in cinnamon sugar topped with that cream cheese frosting and that warm gooey cinnamon center. I mean, you really cannot go wrong with these. Not to mention at $5, this is a fantastic value. Let's wash down those fried cinnamon roll bites with the coffee cocktail. This has Joffrey's coffee with milk, vanilla vodka, and Kahlua rum and coffee liqueur for $11. They served like an espresso martini during Festival of the Arts, but it was very tiny and I think it was more expensive than this. Here we've got a whole cup full of espresso martini-like beverage, and I love a good boozy coffee, so let's try this out. Very strong coffee flavor, which I'm shocked about. I've said this in a couple of videos, but I usually don't like coffee drinks with too much milk, and I was worried because this has like, what looks to be like a lot of milk, but no, I'm actually getting a strong coffee flavor through there. Not tasting much of the alcohol, but maybe that's because a lot of the ice melted because I took a lot of photos and videos of all this food before I ate and drank it. Um, but still, this is pretty good. Only $11 for a boozy coffee at the festival. Perfect addition to Epcot. I think this, or to Brunch Cut, I mean. I think this is new to the booth this year. I don't know if they had it last year, but I guess you guys will let me know in the comments. Next up, we are going to eat the avocado toast with marinated tomatoes and plant-based cheese crumbles on toasted chapata for $6. In previous years, I don't think this had plant-based cheese on it, but you were probably able to like modify it to remove the cheese to make it plant-based. Look at the monorail coming by. <laughs> but yeah, this year the avocado toast is naturally plant-based, so we're going to try that out. Cheers. It's avocado toast. You can't go wrong here. I always say it's like nothing special, but it's good avocado toast. The ciabatta is really nice and toasty. I'll tell you what, we've had this like sitting out for quite a while and the toast on the ciabatta has remained toasty. The guacamole or avocado has like a good lime flavor. I'm not really able to taste much of the cheese because I feel like there wasn't a lot on it, but those marinated tomatoes on top are really good. I mean, it's a solid avocado toast. If you're coming to Epcot during Flower and Garden and looking for breakfast, I say get yourself this from Brunch Cot. I saved the new item for last, the biscuit and gravy with impossible chicken fried steak and impossible sausage gravy for $6.75. All right, I have got a bite with everything on there, the gravy, the biscuit, the 
Impossible chicken fried steak. Oh! Ooh, falling! That's actually really good. The Impossible chicken fried steak is just a little bit mushy, but overall, it holds its form very well. The biscuit, when you combine it with that sausage gravy, it's very peppery. I gotta say, I actually really like this dish. Really good, you, you can taste, it tastes like sausage, but I know it's not. If you're plant-based, or even if you're not, come over here to Brunch Cot and get this because this is good. Okay, I have just come to the realization, Disney keeps doing this to us. The biscuit and gravy is not plant-based. I guess the, uh, the gravy on top, the sausage gravy, has cream or something in it. It is vegetarian, there's no meat in this, but it is not plant-based. I'm looking on the thing right now, it doesn't say it's plant-based. And I know during like Festival of the Arts and Food and Wine, they kept giving us like impossible meats and stuff, but the th items themselves were not plant-based because they had some type of animal product in them. Um, so I don't know why they keep doing that. I feel like that kind of de defeats the whole purpose. But um, keep that in mind, if you are eating plant-based, this is not plant-based, unless it maybe is and it's just not labeled, but make sure you ask them. All right, Katie, first booth of the Flower and Garden Festival, Brunch Cot, what did you think so far? I think everything was pretty solid, you know? Like, I really loved the Impossible chicken, the chicken fried steak and the, the gravy, and I really didn't expect to like the Fruit sh Loop shake, but it was, Really? Oh yeah, you didn't do the Fruit Loop Shake. I didn't review the Fruit Loop Shake, but, but Katie did. So Katie is giving you my review of the Fruit Loop Shake. I trust her with my life. I thought it was really good. It tastes like cereal milk. You know, I wish it was a little like frostier, but anyway, the everything was really good. Well, first booth of the Fest Brunch Cot was a success. We are on to the next. Here we are at the Farmer's Feast. I'll show you a look at the menu. They have a grilled street corn on the cob, a veal loin, and a strawberry rhubarb upside down cake. As far as beverages go, we've got a hibiscus lemonade cocktail and a frozen lemon tea cocktail. Now, Farmer's Feast is kind of like a unique booth because the menu actually rotates. Every month or so, they'll have a springtime menu, a summertime menu, and then I don't know what they really call the other menu. Um, but yeah, there are three separate menus, so depending on when you're coming to the festival, the menu might look a little bit different. And I am actually really sad because Farmer's Feast has always been one of my favorite booths at the festival because they had this bison on the menu that was always like top of my, top of the menus at the festival. It's always one of my favorite things and they don't have it this year. Usually they open the festival with it and they kind of changed it up this year and are doing a different kind of grilled meat. So we're gonna get that and see how it compares to the usual bison. If you guys were interested in getting the corn, they are grilling that up fresh over here. And I gotta say, it smells really good. They're making that all fresh fresh right over here, right next to the booth. This is the veal tenderloin with spring pea risotto featuring Ben's original Italian grains, arborio rice, and red wine syrup for $8.50. When it comes to Epcot Festival food, this is one of the more pricier items that you'll kind of find. You very rarely see items that are pushing like the $10 mark. So this one's definitely up there and it looks kind of dry. So we're gonna see how this is. Let's try the veal first with some of that red wine syrup there. It doesn't taste like the best cut of meat. Definitely very dry, kind of chewy. I'm not really loving it, but I do want to try this spring pea risotto here. No, I do love a risotto, and this is very good. Mm -hmm. Very cheesy, and if you're worried about tasting the peas, do not worry, you really cannot taste the peas much at all. Not quite as good as the risotto that they have for Festival of the Arts, over in Canada, but still, I mean, I just, I, th I think I just love risotto. <laughs> now I know for the springtime menu that they have over at Farmer's Feast, which starts on March 31st, they actually have a seared scallop with a tomato risotto. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds really good too. So I'm very curious to, to see how that one is. Um, but I do dig this spring pea risotto. I feel like I'm gonna eat all this risotto and like not a lot of the veal because the veal itself isn't that good. I did just have another bite of the veal, and I gotta say, it's seasoned pretty well. The flavor is there. It's just, the quality of the meat is not there for me personally. But I am very excited to come back for the spring and summertime menu to see what they kind of whip up for those. It's, I, I love that they have like a booth with a seasonal rotating menu. I think it keeps things 
fresh and interesting. I think they should do that for more of the booths at the other festivals. All right, after the Farmer's Feast, the next booth we have up is the Citrus Blossom, which has taken over the Odyssey. On the menu, we have the orange sesame tempura shrimp, a lemon meringue pie, as well as the orange lemon smoothie, and the orange bird sipper. If you're looking at anyone walking around with that orange bird sipper, it is from right here at the Odyssey, the Citrus Blossom. They've also got some beers, a Key Lime West, Key Lime Wine Slush. That sounds good. They also have a beer flight. I don't know. I might skip this booth, though, because there is another booth that's hiding in the Odyssey. My friend Kirk actually let me know that they have the Florida Fresh booth in the Odyssey as well. He said that they weren't finished with the booth, um, so they kind of threw it in here. If you know, the Odyssey usually has like two sides to order like the same food items, um, but they kind of split it. So now we have one side for the Citrus Blossom, one side for Florida Fresh. I'm sure that'll change once they finish the booth, but for now, it is in here. Here is a look at the menu for Florida fresh. We have a grilled warm water lobster tail, a Cubanito, which is like a mini Cuban sandwich. And then we also have the Florida strawberry shortcake for our beverages. We have a cucumber watermelon slush, and then you can also get that with some gin. Let's kick off this Florida fresh booth with the grilled warm water lobster tail with key lime butter for $11.25. We're going with the fancy stuff first here. I'm not really sure how to get the lobster out of the tail with plastic silverware. Uh oh, this is gonna be very, very messy. Very messy. Why is the bottom of the lobster black? Maybe from the grill? Do they grill this? I gotta show you guys this. Is this normal? Like, is it supposed to be like this? It could be, it could very much be from the grill, but I feel like I've had grilled lobster tail before and it's never been like discolored. So either I'm about to eat a bad lobster tail or it's just grilled, we'll see. All right, I cut into the lobster tail and it's, it, it wasn't as like tender as I would like a lobster tail to be. I'm, I'm kind of skeptical now. The flavor is pretty good though. That key lime butter on the bottom is really good. Honestly, okay, the quality of the lobster, I definitely gotta say, is probably not the best. Um, it is kind of a little bit chewy, but I will say, I think the black marks are from the grill. I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna pray. Flavor's pretty good on this. I like the little bit of the citrus coming through from that butter. It's more of like a hollandaise sauce, I would say. Promise keeps telling me it's an aioli. It's an aioli, you guys. You are She's a liar. Cheating. No, She's it's cheating. not. That's a hollandaise butter. <laughs> I'm not eating aioli. <laughs> Chill out, everyone. Keep telling yourself that. Chill out, everyone. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not eating aioli. At least I hope not. <laughs> yeah, the lobster's pretty good. For only 11.25, like, I think it's like a half of a lobster tail. Not a bad price. It's a, a pretty big portion of lobster for only $11.25. Honestly, I have a huge chunk left. You wanna try some, Promise? I'll try a lobster. Try some lobster. I'll try an overly darkened, tanned lobster. Blackened lobster. You have we're, to say lobster. We're just right? gonna say it's like a blackened lobster. Okay. Here you go. I get what you mean about like the toughness and the chewiness. The blackness isn't bothering me, and you're right, the lemon, that's the best part. The sauce is the best part. I, I get, I'd get. i recommend this lobster tail. At only $11.25, I'd say I'd get it again. Yeah. Not bad for a lobster tail. Next, let's try the Cubanito with mojo marinated pork belly, ham, Swiss cheese, pickles, and stone ground mustard sauce for $6.25. It is actually called a Cubanito, and I feel like it's because it's like a mini Cuban. A mini Cuban, a Cubanito. Looks good. I wouldn't say it's anything like special. It tastes like a Cuban sandwich. I mean, I love a good Cuban sandwich. They have one over at the Backlot Express in Hollywood Studios. And I gotta say, it tastes pretty similar to that. I feel like it might honestly be the same. But I love the vinegariness from the pickles and the mustard in there with all the pork. Bread's toasted nicely, maybe even a little too much on top. The bread on top is maybe toasted a little bit too much but it's not bad. Caught in the act. Promise is doing the vegan garden graze, the plant, all the plant-based food here today. And look, I've got her in the act eating meat. She's eating the Cuban sandwich here. The Cubanado, 
this is Cubanito. Cubanito. It's definitely vegan. Definitely it is vegan. definitely not vegan, but you guys are seeing it here on my video. She's a fraud. It's so good. Do She's a go, fraud. Do the garden grays and get the Cubanito. <laughs> but go watch Promise's video. She is filming the garden grays if you want to see that. And go watch Phoebe's video as well. She is not doing the garden grays. She is eating meat today, I'm right? Doing everything that isn't vegan today. <laughs> Specifically, not the garden grays. I like it. I, I like it. We'll end this booth off with the strawberry shortcake, but um, actually I didn't get any because Promise told me she was getting it and then she ate the whole entire thing. Kristen said, let me show the shortcake. I didn't know you wanted to physically eat it. So after you showed it, I physically ate it all. It was, it was just okay, you know, like for five bucks though, I think it's worth getting. But there's another thing that has strawberry and whipped cream in it that I'd rather get for that price point, which is the frushi. So I would say maybe skip it and get the frushi instead. Why can't the frushi be on the garden graze just like how the shortcake is? I don't know, but I'm glad I skipped the shortcake if you said it's pretty mid. But even though I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of frushi, but me and Promise eat it together every year. So, so I, I guess we're in for a frushi, frushi date later. Yeah, I mean, I'll get you your own. I don't, I don't share my frushi. <laughs> we just walked back through the Odyssey to do our lap around the world showcase. And I saw a couple people with the key lime wine slush from the Citrus Blossom booth. And it looked so good. I'm kind of regretting not getting that from the Citrus Blossom, but I guess I'll just have to come back at another time and get that. Let me know in the comments if you tried it today and let me know how it was. All right, we have made our way over to Mexico now. They have a Sope de Chilorio. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They also have a Tamal de Rice and a Flan. And the drinks are really what I'm interested in here. They have a lychee margarita and a floral margarita, as well as a craft Mexican draft. Those margaritas sound so good. And in true Mexico fashion, we actually ended up getting both of the margaritas that they have here. They have a lychee margarita and a floral margarita. I can't wait to try both of them. We are going to start with the lychee margarita. This has Blanco tequila, lychee liqueur, citrus juice, and agave nectar for $14.50. Let's try this bad boy out. Oh, that is good. That is so good. Oh man, I love lychee flavor. This margarita is super light. It's not very strong, um, but that's like, I know, you know when you're coming to Mexico to get a margarita that you are gonna have a strong drink. This one, it just so happens that you can't taste much of the alcohol, but I taste that fresh lychee citrus juice here. Oh yeah. We have a contender for best drink of the fest right here. My good friend, Allie, loves lychee and she's coming here later today. I cannot wait to tell her about this drink. She is gonna love it. I, it's, it's so good, guys. Almost, the lychee margarita almost reminds me of like a white wine and how light it is. I, I'm shocked there's not wine in there, but for my people that don't like too strong of drinks and you're worried about getting a margarita in Mexico, because like I said, they're typically very strong, the lychee margarita is for you. I'm not sure if anything could top the lychee margarita, but we are gonna try with the floral margarita. This has cherry liqueur, mezcal, hibiscus tea, and lime juice for $14. Cheers. Two margaritas, you know how it is. First lap around, start in Mexico for the World Showcase. We're going two margaritas, so second one. This one's very good as well. I taste that smoky mezcal coming through, and I gotta be honest, guys. <laughs> we actually just did a tequila tasting over at La Hacienda. I didn't film it for my channel. I filmed it for the Kingdom Crew. So if you want to watch that video, go head over to the Kingdom Crew channel. I'm not sure when it'll be up, um, but yeah, now I'm like feeling all tequila expert-ish. So I know my mezcal, I taste it in there. It's very fruity. You can taste that hibiscus, like floral flavor kind of coming through. Honestly, both margaritas are great. I would get both again. I do have to say the lychee is probably my favorite, but I do really, really enjoy both. Now this video is all about the food, but I do have to point out probably my new favorite topiary here, right outside of Mexico, we have Miguel and Dante. This is a brand new topiary. Usually the three caballeros are here, changed it up this year. Look at how just colorful these guys look. Oh my God, this is so awesome. New favorite topiary, I love it. 
But after those margs, I am going to backtrack a little bit to Trowel and Trellis before we start our full lap around the world showcase. We have an impossible farmhouse meatball, soy glazed sticky ribs, and a chocolate mousse terrarium down below we have some non-alcoholic beers that's a new addition this year if you guys did not drink alcohol but still wanted to enjoy a non-alcoholic beer we got that for you right here they also have some beverages with alcohol of course the raspberry and lemon herbal tea with gin and then the brew hub strawberry heat wave Ber berliner i guess a regular beer for you guys but yeah right here at the trowel and trellis trowel and trellis has switched up the menu for this festival usually they have like a really good plant-based dish i believe it's like the impossible Korean short rib. I could be incorrect, but in previous years, like the last, I want to say, honestly, like three, four years, they had that Korean, I think it was a short rib dish, and it was so good. Every year is one of my favorite things at the festival. Change it up a little bit this year, and we've got some new dishes. Let's try this impossible farmhouse meatball first. It's served on a lentil bread with spinach, marinated veggies, and a creamy herb aioli. All right, let's see. I'm gonna take a bite from this side here because it looks like we have more of that impossible meatball from this side. So I'm gonna do this like reversed. Reverse, reverse. <laughs> I'm tasting maybe like a little bit of curry coming from something in here. Maybe it's the lentil flatbread. The lentil flatbread is actually pretty good and the impossible meatball is very, very juicy. The marinated veggies have a nice flavor, like olive oil-y type of flavor on them. I'm not like the biggest fan of like curry in things. Um, so that's why I guess I'm a little apprehensive about this, but even with the little bit of curry flavor, I don't even know if it's fully in there because it didn't say anything about that on the menu. It is still pretty tasty. And if you're plant-based, I definitely say come get this. This is pretty good. And now for the sticky ribs. These are the soy glazed sticky ribs with green onions and peanuts. Let's try a bite. I didn't get much meat from that bite, only bone. Good sticky flavor on there. I love the addition of the nuts on top. They look like almost macadamia nuts, and the jalapenos is a great addition. Let me get a bite with some of that jalapeno. The crunch from the nut and that jalapeno are really what are making these for me. The sticky sauce on the outside caramelizes pretty nicely. This rib itself is not very meaty, I will say, but I see the other one on my plate is pretty meaty, but without it being a meaty rib, it's still good. Oh, pretty good. Out of all the savory food that I've tried so far today, I will have to say that those sticky ribs are probably high up on my list. I really enjoy them. Like I said, especially when you get a bite with the nuts and the jalapeno. Um, I did confirm that the nuts on there are peanuts, not macadamia nuts or whatever else I said. Kind of looked like macadamias, um, but yeah, really good dish. Look, she's a fraud again, gnawing on a rib this time. Yo, Look at this. The garden graze is good. But these ribs are better. They're so good. <laughs> Promise is loving the ribs too. <laughs> All right, after Trowel and Trellis, we are finally, finally starting our lap around the World Showcase. Gonna hit a bunch of booths through here, but we're also gonna skip a bunch on the way. I think the next booth we're gonna hit is Italy, but I'm still gonna show you guys like the menus of all the booths that we skip over. Here at the Lotus House, which is the menu at the China Pavilion, we have a spicy mala chicken skewer, house-made cheesy crab wontons, pan-fried veggie dumplings, and then a bunch of cocktails down here. I thought about getting the spicy mala chicken skewer, but I think I'm gonna pass. Maybe I'll come back for it at a later time. Oh man, on our way to Germany, and I am sweating my buns off. Why did no one tell me that it was gonna be so hot today? The temp is like over 80, not a single cloud in the sky. It is so toasty out here. I'm wearing jeans, trying to drink as much water as possible, but uh, we're gonna power through this lap around the world showcase. While I am passing through Germany, Promise is stopping for some food here. At the Germany booth, they have potato pancakes, a toasted pretzel bread, a warm cheese strudel, as well as, of course, beers and a beer flight. Promise is stopping in Germany to do more of her garden grace. So I'm gonna show you what she gets from Germany, but before I do that, I am making my way to Italy. And not because I think any of the food looks good, because I think the food looks so bad in Italy that I just have to try it. 
And just so you guys could see exactly what I mean by how bad this stuff looks and sounds, they have a mozzarella with, I don't know what that word is, grape tomatoes and pesto sauce. It looks like that. Uh, they also have an arrabbiata pasta, which looks like that. They also have a penne with four cheese sauce, so Alfredo, and they have a chocolate cannoli. Speechless. Well, I have gotten my food, and if you thought this photo looked bad, just wait until you see the actual thing. I mean, this looks bad. <laughs> this just looks even worse. I can't believe this. I really can't get over how truly horrible this looks. There's like a liquid on the bottom of this little cardboard. I don't know when Italy is going to invest in better plating for their dishes. You cannot serve me a pasta with a sauce, with, with that much sauce and liquid on the bottom in a cardboard boat. Like, the plating in Italy is always just <laughs> such a shame. This is the arrabbiata. It's served with a penne pasta, a spicy tomato sauce, and buttery shrimp for $9.25. I did get this for the sole purpose to see just how bad it really is. And we'll see if it like lives up to those expectations. It's just covered in sauce. The penne is Berea. They aren't even using Rao's Arrabbiata sauce. This is so bad. Oh my God, I can make this dish at home. It's like, it's like I wanna say it's like around $8. I said it in this video already, um, but I forget the exact price, but it's around like $8, I believe. I can make a whole like five servings of this for the same price with a jar of rouse and a dollar box of pasta and these, these little shrimp. This is, this is so bad. I, I just can't even get over how that they would serve this. Whose idea was it to put this on the menu? Who came up with this shit? The shrimp just has not a pleasant fishy flavor. There's way too much sauce. The pasta is from a box. I mean, no Italian actually came up with this dish and I can say that confidently. Don't get this. Don't get anything from this booth. I imagine that the cannoli is probably even worse, honestly. No surprise, but Promise definitely got the better dish when she went over to Germany and got the potato pancakes with the applesauce. I shouldn't have even got, I, I wanted to get it just because I knew it was bad. Promise liked her potato pancakes. For $5.25. For really half good. the price. She got a good, good food and I got a really bad one. Um, so yeah, as always, do not come to Italy and get food here. America is a country that I believe we are going to be skipping this time around here. They have a muffaletta panini, spicy chicken gumbo, a bananas foster bread pudding, and then as always, some beers and a beer flight. Oh, also they have the Bayou cocktail. Promise was right, I think Promise was looking for this. All of the foods on the menu in America are repeats from the past couple of years. I've had all of them before. Not a huge fan of any of them, so that's why I am skipping them, but me and Promise are together walking through Japan. We always get something from Japan together every festival, whether it's Festival of the Arts with the sake box or the frushi from Japan for Flower and Garden. We're coming up on Japan here, and to my surprise, there is no one in line. I've never seen no line for the J Japan booth at any festival, let alone Flower and Garden with the very popular frushi on the menu, which of course is what we're here for. Other than the frushi, they also have a steamed bun and a ramen cup, watermelon strawberry lemonade, that sounds refreshing. And then a couple of like sake cocktails as well. This is the frushi, it has strawberry pineapple and lychee wrapped in coconut rice and pink soy wrap served with whipped cream, drizzled raspberry sauce and toasted coconut for $7.75. Me and Promise ate this together, what, the past two or three years? Yes, so long. it's only right that we eat it together again and this time we have a new guest joining us, wow, Phoebe so out honored. here. What if Phoebe we out here? the frushi and a sake box? Yo. Combine it at the same time. The ultimate Japan booth combo. One all time right. I got three frushis and I ate all of them. Like I don't know how video. you like it like, that much. That, it's good, because but not it's that good. so refreshing, so unique, and it's just a must get at Flower and Garden. Sure, so let's girls, get a bite. Okay. 
Grab a bite. You can take one of mine. I guess I'm you kidding. Can take I'm one kidding. Of mine. I guess. <laughs> I was. I was about to say. I did you see mine? Did you see me? Like I thought Thomas back. was gonna like slap my hand I'm out of the way. On. I'm gonna try a different one because I just screwed that one. Okay. Out. Yeah. Okay. I want this smaller There's piece no here. You to gotta eat get. Baby. You gotta get the the like raspberry sauce in there. Yeah, if you don't get that and the whipped cream, sure. it's really not good. Think I gotta it. say. Okay. Cheers. 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 Thank it. It's so mid. <laughs> it's so weird that it's good. It's just the weirdest thing ever. It's so mid. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Too Isn't much rice. Beautiful? No, you can never have too many carbs, especially when they're covered in pink soy wrap. I love it so much. You Although, have to get it and don't share it either. I, I will say in previous years, was there always lychee in there? I believe Because so, yeah. I taste the lychee yes. a lot this time yeah. around. I feel like usually, is it usually cantaloupe in there? Yes, mm -hmm. it, there is cantaloupe. Where is it? I don't think there's cantaloupe in Wait, it this pineapple, year. Wait, pineapple, strawberry. It's usually cantaloupe, right? I think the lychee is a new addition. Sign language, what are you doing here? The lychee is new? No, it was here last year. Was okay. it? But there did used to be cantaloupe. I think there also used to be only three of them and now they give you four. So the more the merrier. The more you know. I think they also gave you four last year. <laughs> yeah, last year it started. Okay, either way, I think the Frucci is mid. Promise loves it. Phoebe, what's your analysis? I'm middle ground. Do you think it's mid as well? This is just nope. my first round. I'm going to go get a second. Nope. La Isla Fresca is next. They have an impossible Jamaican beef patty, a coconut trace leches. Both of these items are actually plant-based. They also have a tropical slush, tropical breeze, orange groves, winery, white sangria. Okay. A couple other drinks as well. But I am here for the impossible Jamaican beef patty. This Jamaican beef patty is actually one of the things that I was most looking forward to trying today. Over here, this is the booth that is the Encanto booth for the Festival of the Arts. Everyone still calls it the Encanto booth. And they have this amazing chorizo empanada. And this impossible Jamaican beef patty is resembling it quite a bit. It's making me miss the empanada, but we'll see if this is a worthy replacement for this festival. Is it a worthy replacement? Looks nice and crispy. That's pretty good. I really like the sweet chili sauce on top. Mmm. Adds a nice sweetness and also a little bit of heat. It is definitely kind of spicy. I think it's coming from the sauce though. Doesn't look the most appetizing inside, but the taste is really good. I'm honestly very surprised that this is impossible meat. Um, it's impossibly delicious, I guess. I always like impossible meat and vegan meat alternatives. Um, and this is no different. This is really good. It's not better than the empanada, but it passes my test. Originally, I had passed on the Morocco pavilion. There was a Mediterranean flatbread on the menu that sounded really good and I was gonna get, but I came right over to La Isla Fresca, got the Jamaican beef patty, and I was just gonna skip the flatbread I'm, because I'm starting to get really full. Um, but the cast member over here let me know that the Mediterranean flatbread should not be missed, and it was his favorite thing. So I think I might backtrack a little bit to Morocco to try that flatbread out. Here is the menu in Morocco. They have the grilled kebabs that they always have, and then that Mediterranean flatbread. That's what I'm here for. They also have the orange blossom saffron cake. Flatbread. This has chermoula, roasted veggies, artichoke, olives, and feta cheese. It also had an undisclosed garlic aioli on it, uh, which I asked them to remove. So mine is sans garlic aioli. Now I know a lot of people are upset that the Honey Bistro is missing the pollinator flatbread from the menu this year. So maybe this is like kind of the replacement just at another booth, a Mediterranean version of the flatbread. I'm pretty sure the flatbread is the same shape as this. So just a bit of a different flatbread that we got going on but I hear it is very good. So I'm gonna give it a try. It's kind of floppy. The outside is like very crispy, but then the center is very floppy. All the toppings kind of fell off there. I can't even lift it up. Oh no. Okay, there we go. That is good. It's like a Greek salad on a pizza. The feta cheese is perfect on there. When you get to the outside of that crust, it's nice and charred on there. 
Greek salad on a pizza. This is definitely delicious. I'm very glad I got it. I am absolutely loving this, especially the bites where you get the olives in there. That nice little olive bite. The feta is the best part. Actually, I don't know, between the feta and that really good crust on the outside there, crust is delicious. This is a very worthy replacement to the pollinator flatbread. And I gotta say, I think out of everything I tried today, this is, this is up there. This is definitely up there. It's really good, especially when it comes to the new items. Come get this Mediterranean flatbread. I'm very happy that I did. On a whim, we also got the orange blossom saffron cake from Morocco. My friends over here got it. And I know this was a lot of people's like favorite thing last year. Can't wait to dive into that. It tell me it's light. Yeah. That's what light. I like. It's light. Mmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not bad like... at all. Definitely very light. Very light. The custard or whatever is on top is a nice citrus flavor. Very, very light. Mm -hmm. We're so full. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh my god, I don't know how we're gonna eat this. But honestly, this dessert is so light that I'm gonna actually go in for a second bite. Saffron crust has a nice little savory element to it. Pretty delicious. Oh, I am so full, but we must continue on. I must, I must push through onto France. France is next, and France always has an amazing booth at the Flower and Garden Festival. They have a goat cheese croissant, a duck dish. They also have a lemon lavender thyme infused cake, and then they have the caramelized. I, I always just call it a creme brulee beignet, but everything here for the fest is usually good. Before I get to my review of the food from France, I want to show you guys my ears. How awesome are these? Someone gave me them on my way to France. They have my logo and everything on them, and they have flowers for Flower and Garden Festival. So this is so awesome. Thank you guys. Whoever gave these to me, thank you so much. And whoever gave me these bracelets, I want to say thank you as well. One says Beverage and one says Kristen's Bro. It was for Ryan, but I took it on his behalf because I'm missing him today. He's on a cruise, so he's not able to be here. So I took it on his behalf and I'm going to make him wear it. But yeah, awesome bracelets, awesome ears. I can't wait to wear these. And yeah, thank you guys so much for saying hi and giving me these, this stuff. First, let's try the croissant. This has goat cheese in it and herbs and roasted garlic. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce how this is actually said because I know I'm just going to mess it up. So we're just going to call it the goat cheese croissant. This croissant is a favorite of mine every single year. I made my friends get it this year. I'm trying to break it in half so you can see this melty goat cheese in there. It's oozing out. Oh, no. <laughs> but look at how good this looks. I love goat cheese. And this is one of my favorites every time. Mm. The goat cheese is so melty and creamy with that oh, garlicky. The croissant is super buttery and flaky. Nice crisp on the outside. Never disappoints. Never disappoints. Next up, we have the creme brulee beignet. And another thing that I absolutely cannot pronounce, but this is a caramelized beignet filled with vanilla cream and glazed with caramel fleur de sole. Let's go with that. Just like the goat cheese croissant, the creme brulee beignet is a favorite of mine every single year, but it's very hit or miss, I will say. The top has to be caramelized just to perfection. And from the looks of it, I'm not really sure if it is today. We'll see how it tastes. Definitely not caramelized enough on the top. I like a really good crunchy bite in there from that brulee sugar. But I will say there is plenty of that cream in there. Sometimes you get them and just like that's not like brulee enough. Sometimes you don't get enough cream in the inside of the beignet. This time there is. It's still really good. But if they just got it right where they added the right amount of cream, toasted the sugar on top for long enough, this would be a knockout every time. But it's still good and I still recommend you get it. While we're walking through the UK, I wanted to point out something that is brand new. They actually have a drink at the UK beer cart, I guess you could call it. They have a Scottish thistle. It sounds pretty good. I think I'm all good on the alcohol for right now. At least I might get something a little bit later. But yeah, I've never seen them have a specialty like festival drink here. And they do here at the UK beer cart. Canada is another booth that I think I'm gonna skip out on this time around. They have seared scallops, beef tenderloin tip. They also have a chocolate maple whiskey cake. Sounds kind of good. Some beers, of course, a flight. But yeah, I think I'm gonna skip it today. 
while we are in Canada, I wanted to mention that the Canada Popcorn Cart also has a specialty beverage. They actually have a peach smash. So similar to the UK beer cart, the Canada Popcorn Cart also has a special drink for the festival. I think that's really awesome and I hope that kind of thing continues. But again, I think I'm gonna skip on it today. I have my eye on like one more thing. I'm, I'm really, really full. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna get any more food for the day, but there is one more beverage that I really, really want to try. So I, I'm holding out for that. Here we are, my last booth of the day, the Swirl Showcase. I've never actually gotten anything from here, I don't think. They have a strawberry basil sorbet, float, liquid nitro honey mascarpone cheesecake. They also have some soft serve. But what I'm here for is the strawberry basil sorbet with hard seltzer for $12.50. Well guys, I am sad to report that I have once again gotten robbed at the Swirl Showcase. I didn't learn my lesson at the Festival of the Arts and I got this wine slushy type deal, uh, like a wine float, and it was served in this little cup. And I once again fell for the trick. I got the seltzer float served in this tiny cup. I just paid like over $12 for a little spray of seltzer and a little swirl of strawberry basil sorbet. I'm so mad at myself. This is this is literally the most ridiculous priced item I've ever seen in my entire life. This is a this has this is a joke. Whoever priced this is I mean it it's not even each sip is going to be like $3. I mean, just like the last, it's delicious. The strawberry basil sorbet is so good with the seltzer, delicious. But I would never get this again and I would never recommend that you guys get this. I'm gonna drink every single last drop of this though, I'll tell you that. While I am done eating and I think drinking for the day, um, there are still two booths that I haven't shown you yet. So I do wanna show you the menus for those booths. Right here we have the Honey Bistro on the menu. They have a chicken and waffles and then also a honey glazed cauliflower. Uh, they also have a honey peach cobbler freeze. I know that's always pretty popular. And if you're looking for the honey mascarpone cheesecake that's usually here, it's actually over at the Swirled Showcase this year. Now I know the Honey Bistro is a very popular booth here at the Flower and Garden Festival, but guys, I am stuffed. I don't think I could eat anymore. So that just means that I'm gonna have to come back to the festival another day and film another video for you guys, trying all the stuff that I kind of missed. But with that being said, let me know down below in the comments if you were here on opening day. And if I missed anything, let me know what your favorite food was from the festival that you tried today. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I'll come back and try it another time. The last booth that I haven't shown you the menu of is the Pineapple Promenade. They have the spicy hot dog. They also have Dole Whip here. And then the fan favorite, the Violet Lemonade. The Violet Lemonade is definitely something that I also plan on getting today, but unfortunately, I failed, I failed, <laughs> I ran out of room. Um, so again, another thing that I'll have to come back for. And since we are finished up eating for the day, I wanted to give you guys kind of like my overview and let you guys know my favorite foods that I tried today. Now, two things on this list are gonna be returning favorites that are favorites every single year. And of course, that is the fried cinnamon roll bites from Brunch Cut, as well as the goat cheese croissant from France. Both every single year, you honestly can't go wrong with either. You, you gotta get them if you're coming to the Flower and Garden Festival. And then two of my new favorites that I tried this year would have to be that Mediterranean flatbread from Morocco. I'm really happy that I went back for it. It turned out to be very, very delicious. And the sticky ribs from Trowel and Trellis were also really good. I'd say that kind of rounds out my top four. Not too many skips this year, but if you are going to skip anything, it's got to be obviously Italy. A disgrace, a disgrace to Italy. I want to thank my Patreon subscribers, Angela, Ashley, Barbara, the Cal Kane's family, Catherine, Lindsay, Misty, Shelby, Adam and Jen, Anne, Brittany, Karis, Chelsea, Carol, Danielle, Marcel, Dante, Dustin and Nancy, Emily, Ethan, John Paul, Christina, Leah, Tori, Lisa, the Martell family, Michael, Pickle, the Latham, Thomas family, Tracy, Wayne, Jermaine, Eric, the Weaver family, Janet and Gary, Stephen and Andrea. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys get a chance to come out and try the Flower and Garden Festival. A lot of the food was really good. I didn't have many things Things that I really disliked today. Everything was pretty solid. So come out here, try all this new food, and thanks for watching. Bye!